brought to you by MTG Loot Chess. They're a new Magic the Gathering loot box based product that has multiple different types of boxes for old and new players to the game. I will leave their website and Patreon links in the description down below. Please guys, go check these guys out as they have a really great product and help support the channel. Hey everybody, Sneaky Narcotic, back at it again with another YouTube video, and in today's video we have yet some more Zendikar Rising spoilers. I'm really excited for today's spoilers, they're kind of crazy, kind of off the wall. Um, before we get into it though, let me please ask you guys to like, share, subscribe, and do all that usual YouTube stuff. It really helps me out and lets me know that you guys are out there. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into our first spoiler of the day with Undo Sky Ruins. It's a double-sided card. The first side just comes in tap, taps for white. The second side destroys all non-land permanents for, what is that, 8 mana. 8 mana for a complete everything's board wiped except for indestructible cards. Um... As far as this card seems standard play, it's just not, because destroying all non-land permanents, basically starting a new game, is kind of oof. It's kind of bad. So, um, what it's really going to see is some commander play. Uh, there's a lot of cards like this in commander that don't have the utilization of double-sided cards. I've kind of changed my opinion of these double-sided land cards, uh, recently. So, I really think that this could possibly just see some play in Commander. It's kind of one of those joke cards that you're just like, Ah, I just destroyed the whole field and screwed up everybody but me. Because I might have some indestructible god creature or just regular indestructible creature. So, like a Dark Steel Colossus. Squad Commander. Three generic and a white for a creature core warrior rare. When Squad Commander enters the battlefield... Create a 1-1 white core warrior creature token for each creature in your party. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, creatures you control get plus 1 plus 0 and gain indestructible until end of turn. And it is a 3-3-4-4 three, three, four, four mana that instantly comes out with an extra body as a 1-1. One, one. That by itself makes it worth it. Two bodies for 4 mana... Uh, Granted, one is a 3-3, three, three, one's a 1-1, one, one. you'd rather have a 2-2 two, two, and a 2-2, two, two, but it still makes it worth it, especially in white, um, just because it gives your opponent two different targets to, to focus on. You know, um, their lightning strike or their lava coil isn't going to be able to hit both creatures. Uh, their swift end isn't going to be able to hit both creatures. So... I think you'll see play in standard just because of that, plus the whole party thing. There's two creatures in green that fix the party thing, so I think that that's very plausible for four mana. Um, probably we'll see some play. Scoot Swarm. I love that they put this card in here because it's a throwback to the Scoot mob. Um, but it's Scoot Swarm, two generic and a green for a creature, insect rare, it has a landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 green insect creature token. If you control six or more lands, create a token that's a copy of Scoot Swarm instead. And it is a 1-1. So, you know, it's not that great until you get to six lands, but the whole point of a landfall deck is to have a bunch of lands fall. So... You're going to be playing Cultivate and Standard. Uh, I really wish Growth Spiral was still a thing. I know it got banned. I didn't know that in previous videos, but I found out today it got banned for some reason. Uh, but you'll have Oro, you'll have, um, oh shoot, I forget her name. Uh, it's the legendary green creature that lets you put down two lands, uh, two extra lands, I want to say. Azusa, that's the one, Azusa. Uh, so we'll have some things that will allow us to do the landfall, plus a really crazy landfall um, creature later on that I'm going to show you. So 
take a look for that. Being able to make scoot swarms out of this just means that you're going to consistently just keep getting wider and wider. Because scoot swarms will make more scoot swarms and so on and so forth. But I do I do like that idea. That sounds kind of cool. Kind of cool. Fast wood thicket. Fast wood thicket enters battlefield tapped. Taps are green. The other side, Vastwood Fortification, is one green mana for an instant uncommon, and it puts a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Never underestimate the ferocity of the Imperative to Thrive, Eiza Jorga Guide? I feel like I'm cussing. Uh, when you understand nature's ways, you're never unarmed. Iza Joraga Guide. I uh, this card won't see play. It's just not going to. Putting a plus one plus one counter on target creature, it's on par for the mana. It's just useless. Cause being a lot of the times, just putting a plus one plus one counter on a creature will not save that creature from whatever you needed to do. Uh like for instance, today I had a game where I um blocked with my two three and he had two twos, right? And that instance would be the only time that if he gave a plus one plus one to his two two, then it could kill my two three and um he'd still survive. But normally it doesn't matter, you know? In the long run I still chump blocked him until I controlled him out of the game. So, you know. Not worth the worth the slot, pretty much. Kazundu Valley. Kazundu Valley enters the battlefield tapped and taps for green. The other side of it is Kasundu Mammoth. One generic, two green for a creature elephant rare. It has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, Kazundu Mammoth gets plus two, plus two until end of turn and is a three, three. I've seen a couple different of these just landfall cards that give your creatures plus something, plus something until end of turn, and I just don't care. I really don't. I wish it would it would give plus two, plus two until end of turn and trample, because this is a green card, and it's a rare, so why can't I ask for something extra? Not just this plus something, plus something until end of turn. So, I do wish there was more about this Kazundu Mammoth. Um, the versatility is still there with this double-sided card. It's a creature, it's a land. It's a creature land. <laughs> so, um, yeah. It's not really a creature land, by the way. It's either a creature or a land, unless it's anywhere but on the battlefield. Skyclave Shade is one generic and a black for a creature. Shade. Shade is a creature type. It's a rare. It has kicker, two generic, and a black. Skyclave Shade can't block. If Sky. Clave Shade was kicked, it enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it, making it a 5-3 instead of a 3-1. Uh, landfall. When a land enters the battlefield under your control, if Skyclave Shade is in your graveyard and it's your turn, you may cast it from your graveyard this turn. Um, I mean, just having consistent pressure on an opponent in black of all things, normally this would be like a red card. And black of all things, that's pretty good. Uh, but you also have to make sure you keep enough mana to cast it. So I don't necessarily know if this will see play. Um, out of the landfalls, this seems pretty strong for a landfall card, to be honest. But I just don't know if it will see play. We'll have to see how the meta stands. Grackmaw, Skyclave Ravager, is a one generic, one black, one green legendary creature, Hydra Horror Rare. Grackmaw, Skyclave Ravager, enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it. When another creature you control dies, if it had a plus one plus one counter on it, put a plus one plus one counter on Grackmaw. When Grackmaw dies, create an XX black in green Hydra creature token where X is the number of plus one plus one counters one Grokma. Uh and it is a zero zero, obviously at first. So, or it's actually a three three because it enters with three plus one plus one counters. So, the issue with this is that this feels more like a non-legendary creature than it does a legendary creature. A legendary creature would just stand out more to me by itself. Um, 
this this is begging to just die. It really is, because you're not going to give a crap uh, about this card. You're not going to care if it dies, because when it dies, automatically it makes a 3-3 black and green Hydra creature token. X number of plus one plus one counters on Krakma. So, um, I think it's going to see play for that matter, being able to destroy it, to sacrifice it, to make it a pawn uh, as the Grokma, and then being able to get that black and green Hydra creature token is not bad. So I definitely think it'll see play. It's it's basically a 3-3 three, three for 3 that gets you a 3-3 three, three when it dies. So definitely worth the mana. Orin Reef Ooze. Two generic and a green for a creature ooze. It is a rare. When Orin Reef Ooze enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. When Orin Reef Ooze attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on each attacking creature with a plus one plus one counter on it. It is a two. Um, not a big fan. I wish it would just say when it attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on each attacking creature. That would have made it enough, but you have to make sure that you're playing these plus one plus one counter tribals. And that just makes this card bad. So, excuse me, probably not going to see play. At least in standard. Shadows of Verdict is a three generic, two black mana sorcery rare. Exile all creatures and planeswalkers will convert a mana cost three or less from the battlefield. And all creatures and planeswalker cards with converted mana cost three or less from all graveyards. Uh, it's one more mana than I feel like it deserves. And that's the only reason I won't... I mean, it's going to see play. It's going to see play because it affects the graveyard as well as the field. And it affects creatures and planeswalkers. It's very versatile, especially for five mana. I don't think it's worthy of a rare being at five mana, though. It's my only issue. So, if you guys ever have any contestment with what I'm saying, or have your own opinion, please put it in the comment section down below. I judge the cards based off how I feel, uh, how I've played games, and just 5 mana for a... what feels like a Cry of the Carnarium is basically what it feels like to me. It is similar. Um, just is kind of bad. So... I don't know. I don't know if the extra two mana is worth killing Planeswalkers that are CMC3 or less, which most Planeswalkers are not. So, we'll see. Felidar Retreat. For four mana, three generic, and one white, enchantment, rare, and then it has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. Create a 2-2 white cat beast creature token. Or, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. I really, 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 really badly wish that a Johnny, um, great-hearted, I want to say? The Johnny from War of the Spark is about to cycle out. And it did something similar. It gave all your creatures vigilance, but it also negative two gave all of them plus one plus one counters. So... I just wish that this was in the same cycle, just to see. Just to see if this could be a good card. Now, obviously, whenever you're landfalling and you're making a crap ton of 2 2 white cat beast creature tokens, when we just had in uh, M21, M21, yes, M21, uh, the cat um, creature type getting a really big vamp. So, or, yeah, vamp. Um,. Then, I would like to say that this matters, the type of token it is. So, I didn't get to play M21 a lot. I didn't. Uh, even now, when I'm playing Standard, because I missed the whole M21, it's almost Zendikar Rising. The only cards I really see are, are not cats and dogs. So, I just don't know if cats and dogs is a good tribal. I don't know if it's specifically cats for this card. So if it is, let me know. Um, obviously, M21 is not cycling out, so we can try the Cat Tribal with Felidar Retreat and uh, Fabled Passage and Evolving Wilds, which means that you're getting double the landfall per one land. Plus, I think Bant is going to be the correct colors for landfall. 
Although I could be wrong, you know. Uh oh god, I forget his name. The the freaking four armed locust now. Omnath. Omnath is four colors now, and it's bent plus red. So uh red, white, green, and blue, everything but black. So that's why I just I think that it's gonna be better for bent and standard because a four color deck is just gonna be kind of bad. Where a three color deck is a little more playable, especially when we're losing shock lands. Um, we're gonna get the dual sided DC or uh, DSCs in this, which is the dual sided double sided cards. Uh, dual sided double sided cards. That's hilarious. Dual land double sided cards. But I just don't know if it's going to be able to to uphold. Uh, four colors when we I mean the triumphs may help may help but still still you have to outpace aggro sorry for the rant let's continue thundering rebuke one generic one red for a sorcery uncommon thundering rebuke deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker fire is too imprecise for the, my taste I'd rather rely on a single well-placed bolt of lightning Lyris Seagate wizard so this card is actually going to be really good not in mono red thankfully although it might see play in mono red it's going to be more in control and maybe possibly the wizard tribal that they're trying to push if it is a good tribal um we'll see mono red or not mono red this this card uh the drawback of course it being a sorcery is a little iffy it kind of reminds me of lava coil because lava coil for two mana and a sorcery Dealt for damage in exile target creature if it uh it, it dealt for damage to a creature and if it was to die would exile it. But this doesn't exile, but it does attack a planeswalker for the same mana cost. So I versatility in red is pretty good, and this will probably see play. Soaring Thought Thief, one blue, one black for a creature human rogue uncommon. It has flash, it has flying. As long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, rogues you control get plus one plus zero. Whenever one or more rogues you control attack, each opponent mills two cards, and it's a one three. I know it's a lot to ask for an uncommon, but I really wanted it to say whenever one of your rogues, uh, whenever a rogue attacks, uh, that you control, each opponent mills two cards. That would be real good, or just target opponent mills two cards. I don't think this is going to be played in Commander. I mean, unless you have a Rogue Tribal, maybe. But as far as Standard, that would have worked really cool and possibly been fun. Scion of the Swarm. Three generic and two black for a creature vampire cleric. It is an uncommon. It has flying. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on Scion of the Swarm. Vampires are now masters of their own fates. Commander of uh, commanders of their own legions, and it is a three-three. My issue with this card is that it's five mana for basically a um. God, I'm trying to remember the vampire that did this exactly. It's it's an Johnny Pride mate, but there was a a Johnny Pride mate in black that was a vampire that flew. And I was trying to remember what that's called, but it's been so long since I've seen the white black life gain deck. I just don't remember. Um. Hmm. That's embarrassing. Well, anyways, this card is too much mana. That's my issue with this card. It's probably not going to see play because it's too much mana. It's not good enough on its own to be a bomb. And honestly, for five or above mana and ways I build decks, you have to have you have to be a bomb card. You have to be worth the mana, especially in standard. This isn't commander where you just have a bunch of mana rocks and and ramp and all this and that. This is standard, where you're on average maybe going to see 8 lands, unless you're playing really mid-range and control-y, then you might see 14. And that's still like averaging 2.5, I mean, let me think, 8? That You could play this in another spell, basically. So I just don't like it for its mana cost. Fireblade Charger. For one red mana, get a creature Goblin Warrior Uncommon. As long as it's equipped, it has haste. When it dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Down in Flames isn't a destination, but a journey. 
That is hilarious, and it's a 1-1. So, with all these equipments that are allowing us to instantly equip it to stuff, that's good, because it's going to help it get haste. I wish it... Again, I, I make wishes. I wish it wasn't haste. But we're dealing with mono red, so it has to be haste, you know? Um... I don't really think this will see play, for real. I, I'm sure there's going to be some random deck to prove me wrong. But I don't think it will see play just because... Then you have to tie yourself to not only, like, mono red or small creature red. You're going to have to tie yourself to the idea of... Equipment. And there is going to be a... a I want to say a Boros Equipment deck from what I've seen of these cards. And then this, this card will probably see play in that specific deck as the bottom card of that deck. Low mana cost. Has some type of synergism with the uh, equipment mechanism. Or the mechanics of equipment but i just don't see it elsewhere masters of winds it's too generic and two blue mana for a creature sphinx wizard a lady sphinx a lady sphinx with a weird anyways it is a rare <laughs> it just looks so weird to me i uh, flying when master of winds enters the battlefield draw two cards and discard a card Whenever you cast an instant, sorcery, or wizard spell, you may have Master of Winds. Base power and toughness become 4-1 or 1-4 until end of turn. So, um, this is begging you to play, again, a wizard and instant sorcery deck. Um, I think it's, I don't think it's good enough. Honestly, I don't think it's good enough uh, to really be the top end. And that's what it's trying to say. Hey, put me at the top end of this instant or sorcery or wizard deck. But really, I just don't like it. Don't really. Plus, the whole draw two cards and discard cards kind of stupid. Just stupid. Just let just let me draw a card. Let me draw a card without any drawbacks, please. I'm in mono blue. Come on. Glass bull shore comes in tapped. Capture blue. The other side of it is Glass Pool Mimic. You're generic in a blue for a creature shapeshifter rogue, and it's a rare. You may have Glass Pool Mimic enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature you control, except it's a shapeshifter rogue in addition to other types. This is um this is pretty good because this gives you another <laughs> It gives you another way of making that uh, creature that is all of it. Warrior, Rogue, uh, Wizard, and Cleric. And that turns on the party system. So for three mana, you get, yet again, uh, you can copy that card. As well as it just copies all your good creatures. Obviously not legendary, because it doesn't say it doesn't make a non-legendary copy of that creature. But still... A could possibly be really good card. Three mana to basically copy a creature is pretty good. Um, and then of course again versatility of being a land. I love the hedron and like here. Let me get my mouse over here so I can show you what I'm talking about. I love all of this. The whole mirror effect. It's it's one of my favorite things in art in general. Is the mirror effect and like actual vibrant colors is another thing of mine. This card is really beautiful. Like, if I had to... I don't know if I'd necessarily say this, but... If I had to pick a card that I had to paint the art of that card as a painting in my house... So far today, at least, I would pick this card. Because it's just really cool looking. Anyways. A Gadim's Awakening. X mana and three black mana for a sorcery mythic rare. Return from your graveyard to the battlefield any number of target creature cards that each have a different converted mana cost, X or less. This, the other side of it, by the way, is just uh, you can pay three life for it to come in untapped. It taps for a black, otherwise it comes in tapped. Um, <sighs> out of the cycle of lands, the little pay three life and it comes untapped, which. By the way, just to complain a little bit, dumb. Anyways, I uh, I think this is probably the most powerful that I've seen. Um, just because it's it, it brings back a lot of creatures from your graveyard, potentially. 
if you totem pulled it to where you have uh, CMC, why actually different converted mana costs? Um, I'm trying to remember the ruling on it because I believe, like, say for instance, this has three black mana. If you had a CMC of the same, but you had a different amount of black mana symbols in there, then I believe that still counts as a different CMC. So I want to say. I want to say that this card is going to be really good in command. Really good in command. I don't know about standard. Um, I don't know if there's really a deck out there that's trying to put all its creatures in the graveyard and just attack at once, except for maybe a Dance the Mance deck, which does it off obviously in a different way by having sacrificable artifacts. But if there is a standard, this will definitely be a card of that. Uh, in Commander, there's a bunch of them, bunch of decks. I play a a, a, a Clan Notes off deck, Marin of Clan Notes off. This deck would need this card, or would love this card in general, because then it brings back so many creatures from my graveyard. Um, so yeah, definitely a Commander. I don't want to call it a staple, but it's it's up there. It's a really good card for recursion. Roost of Drakes. One blue mana for an enchantment uncommon. It has Kicker. Two generic and a blue. When Roost of Drakes enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, create a 2 2 blue Drake creature token with flying. Whenever you cast a kicked spell, create a 2 2 blue Drake creature token with flying. I am not a big fan of the kicker mechanic. A lot of people are. And I know I'll get crapped on for this. But just in general, <sighs> big payout. A lot of risk you know and sometimes hey oh, it's not even worth it i've seen a lot of crap kicker guards especially in dominaria if you really want my honest opinion what killed kicker for me dominaria um this is at least a payoff that says when you cast a kicker spell because that's the issue is that if your kicker spell comes in and it's countered then it's an issue if it comes in and your opponent's able to uh, not necessarily counter the spell, but counter whatever effects, then it's an issue. So I just want a payoff for paying so much mana into a kicker spell. So yeah, I think this card possibly could help out with kicker a lot. It lets it dirtles out the game enough for you to be able to play more kicker. Um, and it's a very low. It's a one drop enchantment. So I think definitely. Definitely will see play if there is a kicker deck in standard. Um, it itself supports it, so it, it gives you a two-two Drake. And also, if you already had one of these out, it gives you another two-two Drake when you cast the spell. So I I think possibly worth, possibly worth. Base camp. It's a land uncommon. Base camp enters the battlefield tapped. Tap it for a waste. Or you can tap it, add one mana of any color, spend this mana only to cast a Cleric, Rogue, Warrior, or Wizard spell, or to activate an ability of Cleric, Rogue, Warrior, or Wizard. A new dawn, a new adventure. I really, I, I think they should have saved the party mechanic for D and, the D&D &D crossover that they're doing next year, but maybe they'll reintroduce the party uh, mechanic in that set. Reintroduce, revamp it. Ah, uh, yes. This is probably going to be one of the best cards in the set. Um, Ancient Green Warden. Four generic and two green mana for a creature elemental mythic rare. It has reach. Then it says you may play lands from your graveyard. Okay. If a land entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability or a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time, and it's a 5-7. This card's really good. It's super good. It's it's amazing that they would print a card that A lets you play lands from your graveyard, but also gives you um I wanna say it's called Panharmonicon. Panharmonicon for your lands. Uh so this card will probably see a jump in price uh after a little bit once people figure out a deck that is completely safe in. It's six mana for five seven with reach. Definitely worth the mana. Uh, plus the whole factor that it goes into a landfall deck, no doubt. It makes it to where a Lotus Cobra will have a landfall ability of adding two mana of any color, and that's just off the top of my head. Like the mana before today. Um, 
Oh, this would be the perfect scenario. Okay, so you have that mammoth from before that says uh, landfall uh, when a land enters the battlefield, it causes the mammoth to get plus two, plus two until end of turn. So this automatically would double that to where it gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. But then you use a, uh, one of the fetch lands like Fabled Passage or uh, Evolving Wilds, and you get two landfall triggers that trigger twice each. So that would be plus eight, plus eight. Eight into a turn, and now you've turned a, in my opinion, crap card into a good card. I uh, I don't even remember what the base power and toughness was, but still, you're. I think it was a three drop that's hitting for an eight eight at least. So uh, actually a nine nine at least, because I'm pretty sure it was at least a one one. So yeah, that's pretty good, and that's just the tip of the iceberg with this thing. Um, Really looking forward to this card. Really going to have to get my hands on one of these cards because I, I'm building a landfall commander deck. Um, not about Omnath, but uh, not not about Omnath. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a K and T deck, but still, it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. It'll be real cool. No priest of oblivion. One generic, one black, one creature. Uh, one generic, one black, one creature. Vampire cleric, rare kicker. Three generic and a black. It has menace and life link for two mana and a two one. That's that's okay. Uh, when no priest of oblivion enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That is really good. That is six mana. To give you a 2 1 minutes lifelink, whatever, whatever, but to basically play a from the grave uh, on a creature body for an extra mana. So that's gonna be really good. Um, you're gonna get your bomb card. Let's say, for instance, you have an ancient green warden in your graveyard, and like, dang it, I have a lot of lands in my graveyard too. Well, now you got it back for 6 mana, which is this exact CMC. Plus a little body of a 2-1 with menace and lifelink, so not bad, not bad. Bean Coast. Bean Coast enters a battlefield tapped. Taps for blue. Stay close to my light. You don't want to get lost on the rocks. Uh Yen Yen Yarn Oh man. Jin Jinar Cylindy Lol Mage. Bean Veil, one generic and a blue for an instant uncommon. Creatures your opponent's control get negative zero, uh, negative two, negative zero until end of turn. All your minnows in the murk come to my light. Jijanair, Siladun, uh, Silindy, Lol Mage. So, this is actually going to be one of those cards you're going to want to pick up for draft. Believe it or not, uh, a lot of times they have similar cards. There was a... Uh, I don't want to say ice over because it wasn't, but it was like something to do with ice. And it would give all your opponent's creatures like negative four, negative zero until end of turn. Or a specific creature, negative four, negative zero until end of turn. Your opponent in draft a lot of times has to hit you in the face to win. A lot of the time. Uh, that being said, if they go all in and for a little more over or exact damage and they're like, ha ha, I have exact damage and even if you block it i still have exact damage you can be like aha for two mana i say no you don't so this card's going to be draft worthy as far as standard not probably going to be a really good card in general uh you might want it for an instant sorcery and wizard deck but uh other than that probably not Kerrigan, War Leader, one generic, a red, and a white for a creature human warrior. That face looks too real to me. I really think that face is well done. It is an uncommon. It says other warriors you control get plus one, plus one. So it's a lord for warriors, which is good because we're going to have a warrior tribal. It's in the correct colors because it's Boros. It's a 3-3 three, three for three, so it's already on curve. From Rebellion against the Akum Skyclave to fighting the Eldrazi Titans. Hey, they mentioned the Eldrazi for like the first time ever. Uh, the dragons riding Karagon tribes have the dragon riding Karagon tribes have never missed an opportunity to defy the odds. Um, yeah, I think this card will be good because there's gonna be a warrior tribal. Uh, whenever you get a lord in a war in the, in a a lord is a Creature that gives all your other creatures something that are a specific creature type. So this is a Lord of Warriors, right? 
So, um, I really think it's going to be worth it. I do. There always are. Relic Vial. Three generic for an artifact uncommon. Two generic and tap it. Sacrifice a creature. Draw a card. As long as you control a cleric, Relic Vial has whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Oh my god. This is going to be great because uh, clerics are going to be all about dying and coming back to life and being a huge pain in my ass. Uh, I really am excited for the cleric deck. So this is like, hey, here's an artifact to go with your cleric deck that also lets you draw cards. Now, two generic mana is a little bit much. And you do have to tap this. You can't just straight up sacrifice. Pay another two generic mana. Sacrifice. And it's three mana. So it's possible that this isn't going to see play. But I love that they're still compounding on the idea of clerics consistently coming back to life over and over and over again. And just draining. Or I almost want to say this kind of feels more like... um. Oh man, I can't even remember what that uh car what that mechanic was. Uh it was an Orzov mechanic though that drained a life if you paid it. Ah, oh, that's gonna kill me, I can't remember it. Relic Golem, three generic artifact creature golem uncommon. Relic Golem can't attack or block unless an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. The six six for three uh, that also two generic and a tap it target player mills two cards. Hmm, this is possibly a good card because it doesn't take a lot for your opponent to get what eight cards in their graveyard. Uh, I milled somebody out by turn eight today in a turbo mill deck. So yeah, I would have loved a six six blocker. Um, Shatter Skull Charger, one generic and two red mana for a creature giant warrior rare. Kicker two, trample haste. If Scatter Skull Charger was kicked, it enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. Okay. At the beginning of your end step, if Scatter Skull Charger doesn't have a plus one plus one counter on it, return it to its owner's hand. Okay. So to keep it out forever, it has to be a five mana spell. Or you can continuously play th pay three mana for a trample four three with haste. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think it's worth it. Um, I do love that huge butt hand that he has here. I don't know if you guys can really see that in the background, but it looks like this ghost had this gigantic hand here. Whoa there, buddy! Bigger than a horse over there. Shatter Skull Minotaur. Four generic, two red mana for a creature. Minotaur Warrior Uncommon. This spell costs one generic less to cast for each creature in your party. And it has haste. We just pay him and point him at problems. Arrow Sea Gate Adventurer. And it is a 5 4. For six mana, possibly discounted. Uh, with haste. This card reminds me of a dragon that ha was a 5 something with haste. Uh, and people, I want to say it was a dragon or a dinosaur, but people would always use it as a finisher that you wouldn't be expecting. You know, you don't just expect all of a sudden five damage to come out of nowhere and hit you in the face. So, possibly going to be playable with a discount. Possibly. Nimble Trap Finder. One generic and a blue for a creature human rogue rare. Nimble Trap Finder can't be blocked if you had another cleric, rogue, warrior, or wizard enter the battlefield under your control this turn. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, creatures you control gain whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card until end of turn. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's a 2-1 unblockable, which is, uh, it's good. I say unblockable because I'm going to assume if you're building this deck, you're going to be building around the idea of making this card unblockable. Uh, I just don't know if it... Well, like, I really wish they would just made it Rogue Tribal instead of going with the party mechanic. But they didn't. They went Rogue Tribal, or uh, party mechanic. So, <sighs> to each their own on this card. I really don't know how to judge it. I love the, the whole, like... I forget what I, I forget exactly what game this reminds me of, but I love his little haircut and just his little suit and everything. It looks it looks very um. I want to say I. Uh, Borderlands asked me. 
Thundering Spark Mage. Three generic and a red for a creature, human, wizard, uncommon. When it enters a battlefield, it deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker where X is the number of creatures in your party. Stay away from my friends. And it's a 2 2. Um, kind of bad. Kind of bad. It by itself will deal one damage. So, kind of bad. Verizol the Split Current. X mana, a green and a blue for a legendary creature, Serpent. Rare. Verizol the Split Current enters Valfield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each mana spent to cast it. Whenever you cast a cake spell, you may remove two plus one plus one counters from Verizol. If you do, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy, and it's a zero zero. So being able to double cast a kick spell is pretty good because it is on cast. That's really good. Um, enter the battlefield with a plus one of each mana spent to cast it. So really, it's saying for uh, whatever X cost is plus two because it's including that blue and green in there. So. <laughs> really be able to utilize this you're gonna to have to cast it for four mana or no two because you can make x zero so you could you could basically use just just for two mana this card could be good if kicker is good that's that's my issue if kicker is good this card will be good if kicker is bad this card is going to be not so great throne of mckindy tap it add a waste tap it uh, and pay one generic, put a charge counter on Throne of McKindy. Tap it, remove a charge counter from Throne of McKindy, add two mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast kicked spells. Again, if kicker is good, this card will be worth it, but I just don't know about that. Myriad Construction. For generic artifact creature construct, it is a rare it's a four four for four you can pay kicker of three generic if it was kicked it enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each non-basic land your opponents control when myriad construct becomes the target of a spell sacrifice it and create a number of one one elus construct artifact creature tokens equal to its power this could be a commander card worth having um i don't know because, I mean, here's the thing. In Commander, a lot of times, people do not play basic lands. They just don't. They, like, there's monocolored decks. They play a lot of basic lands. There's dual-colored decks that might play a, ba a basic land here or two, but they're going to try to play a lot of dual color. And then the more colors you get, the more this card seems more viable to me. So, I just want to say, I think this card is going to be at least Commander-lookable. Um, to make a huge creature, and then, yeah, you know, it becomes a target of a spell, sacrifice it, and create a number of 1-1 one, one constructs. That's a crap ton of constructs that you can make. If you, this is an artifact deck, it's going to be even better because you can beef those constructs, have a crap ton of them, go wide, kill everybody. So that's just what I'm thinking. Um, and it's the target of a spell, so it could be your spell. You could say, tap it, and it died. So, just saying. Oh, yes, the most memorific card since the Yargle right here. Cherix, the Raging Isle. It's two generic and two blue mana for a legendary creature, Leviathan Crab. It is a rare. It says spells your opponents cast that target. Cherix, the Raging Isle, costs two more to cast. A three mana, Cherix gets plus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of islands you control. How big that butt? It's 17 deep. It is a 0 17. Um, granted, if you have 17 islands out on the field, this instantly will kill it with the ability. So keep that in mind, all you commander players. This is probably not going to be your commander, but it is super cool. I, I kind of wish they would have said it, it doesn't die to its own ability or something along the lines of that, because even if it was like a... A 16 to 1, that's fine. But at the same time, I don't want to kill it because I have too many islands out, you know? Um, this card <laughs> looks funny as hell. It, it's, it's funny as hell. What you do is you swing with it. You swing with it and be like, okay, so either I'm going to buff it or you're going to block. No blocks declared? Okay, I kill you. 
You know, so like that that's how you look at it. Um Relic Axe. Too generic or an artifact equipment, uncommon. When Relic Axe enters the battlefield, equip it to target creature you control. Equipped creature gets plus one plus one. If it's a warrior, it gets plus two plus one instead. Equipment is uh, equipping cost is two. It's light as a feather, but it hits with the force of a boulder, a very sharp sharp boulder. Um possibly playable just because it's un it's not colored. Uh and you can it instantly attaches to something. There will be an equipment tribal in Boros, so I imagine this will see play. The last card of today is Relic Amulet. It's two generic mana for an artifact uncommon. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery or wizard spell, put a charge counter on a relic amulet. A two generic and tap it. Remove all charge counters from relic element. Uh, 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 amulet. It deals that much damage to target creature. Old power finds new purpose. I actually like this card because it gives. Hmm, for each instant sorcery or wizard spell, it. Gives you a charge counter. Then it gives you a reason to continuously just play more spells. So if I'm just drawing cards, playing all my draw spells, let's say I'm playing Commander Mono Blue. I'm playing Opt. I'm playing uh, Ponder. I'm playing. I. Uh, oh God, I'm sorry. There's so many of them. Brainstorm. I. Oh, oh. Radical Idea. Chemistry's Insight. Glimmer of Genius, just all the draw spells, right? This at least gives me some payoff for playing all the freaking draw spells in life. So, I think this will see play in standard if there is a wizard, instant, or sorcery tribal deck. Um, instant sorcery's kind of always been in control, so I even if they just want to do like some type of, it doesn't have to be a color because this is colorless. I Let's say my favorite control is Esper. You know, you, you put this in Esper control deck. Okay, this sees play. It will kill a creature or two at least. So, definitely. Definitely will see play. But anyways guys, that is the end of the video. Thank you for watching so far. I really enjoy um, making these videos. So please hit me with a like. Hit me with a subscribe. Check out new videos to come. Uh, please go check out Loot Chest. I will be putting a, uh, MTG Loot Chest. I will be putting a description for their page and their Patreon down below. But they're a really cool group. Um, I know the owner, and he's super awesome. Just making sure to give anybody who's buying the product a good deal. I, I bought the product, my friends bought the product, and we both got the same deal. And it was really good. So go check them out, uh, and also comment below. I really want to hear from you guys. So now that I'm back in, and in the swing of things, I want to hear from you guys. So thanks for watching, and this is Sneaky Narcotic. Signing off.